Hey friends, Matt aka Martiln here and today I want to show you one of my new favorite plugins which is Morph EQ by Minimal Audio. Morph EQ I think is one of the coolest new plugins out there and I know there's been a lot of videos and stuff about it online and I know there's been a lot of heated debate about it online in some various spheres as well saying whether or not you really actually need this plugin you can do the kind of same stuff with automation in your door etc but i want to take a look at why i think it's an amazing plugin how i'm going to be using it in my workflow and also some other cool things you can do with it inside of ableton live now before we go any further i do just want to mention that minimal audio are not sponsoring this video or anything at all i went out and i bought the plugin because i thought it was a really cool plugin as soon as i saw it i've been tracking it for a while and as soon as i saw it was released i grabbed it played around with it and i fell in love with it so these are all my own thoughts none of this is at all influenced by minimal audio i think this is a really fantastic plugin and uh i want to show you why now before we get started if you like the video please of course be sure to leave a like and a comment down below subscribe if you're new and if you really enjoy the video and my content feel free to head on over to my buy me a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee support me and the channel become a member and get some other really cool awesome stuff if you decide to support me okay so with all that said without any further ado let's take a look at morph eq by minimal audio all right, so first off, what I wanted to do is just give a quick overview of Morph EQ. I'm not going to go super into its features. There are plenty of videos out there going through every single one of its features. Um, so I'm sure you'll be able to find one. I wanted to kind of do this video more as a way of showcasing how I'm going to use the plugin. But first of all, we need to go through its features. So it looks like any other standard EQ. I've just got it loaded up here inside of Ableton Live. And if I play a note, I can send just through a sawtooth wave. I've got this loaded up on a wavetable track, just playing a basic sawtooth wave. And we can click anywhere to add an EQ node and I can click and drag this around. Which is really cool. But where Morph EQ really comes into its own is that you can draw kind of curves or paths for each of the different EQ nodes. Now, Minimal Audio say you can have practically unlimited EQ nodes. I haven't necessarily tried that, but that seems pretty awesome. And so, for instance, if we wanted to, I could draw a path for this EQ node to go from here to here. And I can also, I believe, hold down Command and click and just continue drawing a path like that. And then as I move this Morph knob here, My MIDI keyboard's doing weird things. Uh, you can move across that path with that node, which is really fantastic. Now, there are a few other uh, parameters here as well, which I'll showcase off in a second as well. Um, but first of all, we can do this morphing to basically every single one of our EQ nodes. So I could double click and add another EQ node here, and I could also add a path for this one, maybe click here, click here, click here, click here, and click here. And then as I move this morph control once again, both of those nodes are going to move along their own path that I've made for them. Now, we don't have to have these as uh, peak EQ filters either. We can have them as notch filters, or maybe I could add another one that's a notch filter here, and I can move this across the spectrum this way as well. I can add some curves to this as well if I want to, just by clicking and dragging on each of these, um, and maybe just add like another one going back over here so we can do some kind of weird stuff like that. And then again, as I move this, all of those will move along their own paths, which can create a really interesting sound. Which I just think is really, really fantastic. Um, and there are a whole bunch of other options in here as well, which we will get to in a minute. But for the most part, it works really fantastically like this, also just as a standard EQ. And this drawing of paths right here, I think is an incredibly unique way to approach this like kind of style of sound design. I mean, I personally have done like a lot of EQ automating for sound design. I know a lot of other people, people like AU5 and Virtual Riot and all these other people who do a lot of like bass music and dubstep music and drum and bass, all that kind of stuff. will do a lot of EQ automating to design really crazy like bass sounds and stuff. Um, and yes, you can still do that. You can still obviously automate normal stuff in an EQ, but what this does is present a really unique creative approach to it. And yes, it is limiting in some factors, like you can't kind of have unsynced movement on different EQ nodes or different movement on different EQ nodes or something like that. But the way in which it presents this creative opportunity is just fantastic and 
implemented so, so, so well that I just see myself using this so much when it comes to sound design. Now, there are obviously other features here as well. For instance, the shift control here moves all of the EQ nodes up or down the frequency spectrum. The pinch control kind of either spreads them out from the center or pulls them all back in towards the center, um, which if I kind of move the morph along here, you'll see a little bit easier. The spreads spreads them out in the stereo spectrum, which is really fantastic. And the scale scales up or down the amplitude amount of each of the different nodes. Having these be able to affect all the different nodes at once is really fantastic. And it kind of makes up for the fact that we can't you know, automate any of these particular EQ nodes. Um, I think this is a really fantastic feature. Uh, we've got undo, we've got redo, we've got listen uh, ability in here. We've got adaptive Q, which is really fantastic. We can turn this on or off and it gives us a bit of a different sound. And then I also really like that we've got uh, kind of these different scale amounts here. So I can view this on 6 dB as scale here an 18 dB scale or a 36 dB scale. And also for doing like bandpass filter movements and stuff like that, having parallel as an option instead of series is really fantastic because it means you can have like three or four or five different bandpass filters running in parallel to create really crazy sounds as opposed to having them run in series like you kind of would a standard EQ, I suppose. Then having a dry wet control here is awesome. And of course, having a clipper on the output for sound design purposes is really fantastic because obviously this can get quite loud and you don't want it to kind of destroy your speakers or anything. So if you can just engage this option here to kind of limit the output or clip it and also introduce some uh, interesting harmonics and distortion into the sound. So obviously for sound design purposes, this is already really fantastic. And what I can do with this, if I just go back into Ableton Live here, I could, for instance, just set up a track to resample here and I could just record the movement of this morph EQ on kind of whatever note that I'm playing as I kind of do like a resampling sound design jam, for instance, which is a really fantastic way to go about this. If I just arm this audio track here, I can open up morph and I can also arm my wavetable track. And if I hit record, Obviously, that's a really great way to just create some interesting sounds and stuff with something a little bit more interesting than the Sawtooth Wave, which we could go through in a little bit. Um, but where I think this is really cool and where I'm going to be using it a lot in my workflow is integrating with Max for Live devices to do this kind of a thing to create more interesting movement for sound design purposes and also within tracks as well. Okay, so as an example of how I'm going to potentially be using this is if I go, for instance, and grab a Shaper... MIDI, which uh, I did a video about this the other day, and I've got my own kind of edited Shaper MIDI device, which I'm going to put in here. And what I can do is actually map the Shaper MIDI to the Morph control of the Morph EQ. So I can open up this and click Map and move this to the Morph control. And now every time I play a note into this synthesizer, if I turn down the velocity here, it's going to move the Morph parameter on the Morph EQ, which currently on the Morph EQ, I don't have any nodes set there. But interesting things that I could do, I could obviously change around some of these shapes and stuff like that, and maybe change the rate, etc. And we can see the Morph control moving there. So I could obviously put in my own EQ here, so I could add a node here, and I might make this a low pass, for instance, and I could draw a uh, path all the way up to here. So now I've basically got a low pass filter opening up and then closing back again. And then I might have like a notch filter going the other way as an example. So I can again, oops, daisies, um, delete that morph point, add a, another node here, turn this into a notch and then have this going the other way as an example. So when I now play a note, which is a pretty kind of common filter movement that I like to do. I think it's really cool with bass sounds, especially. <laughs> gives it that kind of more wet quality, um, which is really cool in and of itself, right? And obviously I could say this is a preset and that would be really fantastic. I could also add another node to do something else, right? But what this is really cool is I can also now start to move through presets in Morph EQ as I'm playing some notes and stuff here, again, to record out or make some really interesting sounds too. So as an example, I could keep playing some notes here 
and flick through some different presets. And already we're getting some really crazy sounds. I could loop my shape of MIDI here so it's basically acting more like an LFO. And then as I'm kind of changing between some presets there, I'm getting a whole bunch of different sounds all by just modulating that one morph parameter. And I could also add some other modulators to other aspects of this morph EQ as well. For instance, I could add an LFO or it could be a shape of MIDI again. And this LFO could be controlling say the, um, I don't know, the pinch here. And I could make this a little bit slower Maybe pull down the depth a little bit too. I'm just going to turn off my push here because it's doing some weird things. And then now, as I play this, I can move through the presets or I can shuffle to a random preset. Slow down the rate of movement of the, L of the shape of MIDI. And you can just get some really crazy sounds by flicking through these presets and just having them controlling some of these different macros. And that's really how I think I'm gonna be using it as a creative tool to kind of just move through some of these different presets, find out some really interesting sounds. Um, and record out the output, uh, just have a lot of fun doing some sound design and stuff like that and combining it with the Max for Live devices, adding the modulation because there's no internal modulation in the plugin. But even if there was, I think I'd probably still be using Max for Live devices as well because I can do some other stuff with them that I think is pretty cool. Um, then, you know, already I think it just becomes the most insane creative tool and for like the price it's only like 49 us dollars or something and i think it's fantastic so there you have it there is an overview of morph eq by minimal audio and my thoughts on the plugin why i think it's really cool why i'm going to be incorporating it into my workflow and how i'm going to be incorporating it into my workflow as well if you like this video please of course feel free to drop a like down below as well as a comment subscribe if you're new feel free to buy me a coffee if you want to support this channel and also feel free to click here for an overview of the Shaper MIDI device that I did recently, which I used in this video too. That's all for now. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.